my friends and welcome back so today i want to talk to you guys about an experiment i've been doing for the last three years so this is an experiment i started back in 2021 and this was overwintering my pepper plants so i hope it's not too windy it's pretty windy here today so i hope that's not bothering um the audio today so i'll try to make this video nice and quick and i wanted to go over uh my how my plants did with being overwintered since 2021 um, this was their third year growing, so this was their third season, as well as um, here after that, I'll go through how I personally overwinter my plants, if that's something you guys are interested in. So, real quick, before I get too far into this video, I actually put out a, a video about loofahs just the, um, the other day. If you guys are interested in a seed giveaway, go to that video and let me know. I've debated, someone brought up that um, maybe I should consider doing a seed giveaway, and as you can see, like this plant's loaded with fruit right now, our bell peppers right now that are ready to be harvested for their seed. I'm at the point in my growing season where I'm actually doing that with most of my plants right now. So I got a ton of seed and I was wondering if you guys would be interested in any of that. And if you would, if you can um, go to that video, leave me a comment in that video and also let me know what type of seed you guys are interested in, whether it be a vegetable, a flower, or, um, or an herb, whatever, whatever the case may be. If I have it, maybe I can get it um, added onto like a giveaway. So back to my video. Now, this experiment I started March of 2021. So quick, like how my area, my growing season is. So I'm in growing zone 8B, but we kind of have two growing seasons for the summer. So March until like June uh, is usually like the first portion of our growing season. July, August, they tend to be pretty hot. Sometimes that even into September, it can be pretty hot. And then we get, we cool down a little bit. Like today it's October. It's like 91 degrees outside. It's pretty warm. Um, and I can actually harvest off of these guys until December. So we kind of have like two growing periods. So when you put in your transplant at the beginning of the year, you don't really get much fruit from your peppers the first portion. But after the heat settles down, you know, halfway through the year, you tend to get more fruit that, or peppers the second portion of the season. So I felt like I was wasting a huge portion of the year by waiting for my peppers to get mature enough to be able to actually start putting out the peppers for me. So 2021, I was like, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and overwinter these. I actually had two beds. So I have this bed right here. There's poblanos and then there's um, miscellaneous peppers. Um, I found a couple of, uh, of tags. I have 17 plants in here, so I have nowhere near as many tags. But if you guys are interested, I have a horizon orange sweet pepper, a big Bertha hybrid, a cow wonder, a golden cow, and a coral bell. So um, that's just the ones I found tags tag for. And then I had a second bed over here going as well. And those are my spicy peppers on that side. So first year, very typical year for peppers for me. I um, did my uh, cut back in the winter and my, my typical overwintering routine. Got into the second year. They did amazing the second year. I got fruit the first portion. I got fruit the second portion. I got so much fruit. I didn't even know what, I'm sorry, fruit. I mean, by bell pepper. So I got so many peppers and peppers from the spicy peppers. I didn't even know what to do with everything. I mean, I was canning, I was dehydrating, I was giving them away. Um, I just couldn't even keep up. Now peppers, I tended to use a lot more than the spicier, the bell peppers, I used way more than the spicier peppers and I needed a bed for um, more asparagus. So I went ahead and ripped out these, uh, the spicier peppers. The only reason why was because I needed the bed. It, the, the experiment was going really well at the time and I was kind of sad about having to rip it out, but I eat a ton more um, asparagus than um, I have planted. So I wanted more asparagus. So I went ahead and put asparagus in there. But these guys, I overwintered again. So that was uh, 2022. They did really good. So now we're into 2023 and they did horrible. Absolutely horrible. I did my same exact routine that I normally do and they just weren't putting out fruit like they did the first year. They were they just constantly look sad. Like it's, I mean, it's a hot day today. It's nice and warm, but they're just, the leaves themselves just don't look healthy. My, my routine, my fertilizing routine, nothing has changed. And, um, except for the fact that I'm now getting blossom, blossom end rot, which is, I'm not a stranger to blossom end rot, but it was relentless. Like until recently, I mean, most of my peppers had blossom end rot. And so I was treating them extra for that. I ordered, um, like cow mag on, online like a, fo a foliage spray. I was at like, I just could not battle it. I could not get it to stop. Now that we're in like October, I feel like I'm not seeing as much of it, but even looking through the ones I finally let ripe, ripen, I mean, there's half of the ones that you see have some kind of um, blossom and rot on it, unfortunately. 
Also, the peppers, I mean, we get hot here. It's, an, it's not unusual to see scorching on things, but it was like everything was just so weak on these plants this year. And the second thing, or the third thing after the blossom and rock, the plants are being weak, is um, I'm finally, I just, I probably jinxed myself, actually, is what I did, is I was talking about how I hardly ever get aphids, and there's three plants right here that now have aphids. So I've mentioned to you guys before about how, um, like, lacewing, I got a healthy lacewing um, population, and as well as other things. I just saw an assassin bug just a few minutes ago over there munching on something, and um, I just find that, like, lacewing, if you have, like, an aphid problem, really do help. So I found a video, there's this plant, these plants are just covered in lacewing eggs, and I took, there was a nice little cluster, so I went ahead and took a video of it for you guys, so you guys can see it on the screen and if you guys see these in your garden let them be um and if you see them flying around maybe look them up they're just like these little green bugs with like a um clear uh wing um that fly around and they're super cool bugs they don't really bug you and they don't bite you so i let them do their thing and i feel like the only reason i even have aphids on these guys back here were these ones were the ones that were struggling the most and uh the weaker plants all these guys are nice and clear i don't see any aphids at all on these guys so I don't know. I just feel like they were super weak. And the conclusion to my experiment is that I am not going to be letting these guys go um, into 2024. I will be ripping these guys out. I feel like um, the first two years were definitely worth it. And I don't know if it was actually worth, you know, the time and money and um, water that I actually had to put uh, into these guys this year. So next year, I won't be planting them here. I'll be planting them somewhere else, as well as um, I only keep them for two years from here on out. So that's really it for my um, personal pepper experience and you know it's going to be different for everybody that was just my experience and um what i would do for free for future now uh real quick i just want to go over my fertile uh, i'm sorry my um overwintering routine if that's something you guys were curious about so i um this portion of my garden is in raised beds they're about two feet tall this one's maybe about five feet or oh another assassin bug found him he just flew right past me um Sorry, I got distracted. So about maybe five or so feet wide and 15 feet, 14, 15 feet long. I don't remember exactly. I think it was 14. So a decent sized bed here. Um, and they're like, I, I don't know if I mentioned before, but there's about 17 plants in here right now. And I have these right here that my husband built for me. They're just PVC. And then I purchased a heavy duty plastic from the uh, hardware store in the painters uh, area. And I use that to cover it. And then I just bought clamps to clamp it in place. And then the metal has little, the um, bed itself has little lips on top and I can clamp it right to that. So that's how I keep them covered. Now, before I get too far into the care of it, on warmer days, you don't want them to trick the plant. If it's already going into like the more of a dormant state, you don't want it to think that it's warm enough to start um, uh, producing leaves and stuff again. So if it's a warmer day, I would highly recommend uncovering it and allowing air to flow through it. That way it doesn't think that it's time to wake up and you start um, getting flowers and or the leaves and the flowers from the plant. So now how do I overwinter them? I'll get a video up close, but this is the only one I can, you might be able to see that I can tell from the camera. I go through, once my I get the last of my fruit, so it's like uh, December is when I get the last of my fruit. Once I get that, I go ahead and cut these back probably about 18 inches or so. And uh, I trim off all the extra branches as well and um and i leave the plant just like that there can be a couple leaves but that's really it then there's a few things you want to check so you're still going to want to water your plant i water mine once a month i have this bed set up on drip it's um quarter inch shrimp drip with the meters every six inches so i go through and make sure my drip is still working i got um, very alkaline water and soil here so my drip tends to be and very hard water so my my drip does uh clog up and I have to usually change it about uh, once a year to prevent that from happening. So you want to make sure it's still working. That way when spring comes, you can go ahead and replace it. And if it's not working at the time, replace it at that time as well. So um, drip. Next thing I want to do is compost. You want to add a nice thick, uh, about one inch layer of compost throughout it. The main goal here is that you want to make sure the roots stay nice and warm because that's where the, the health of the plant is and that's where it's going to allow it to continue to grow into the next season. So very important to make sure those roots stay nice and warm. Then um, after that, um, I don't put fertilizer in um, until spring. Um, that's just my preferred method. And then at that point, I make sure that it's covered. 
And like I already brought up, if it's a warmer day, you want to make sure you get them cover, uh, uncovered. And if it's a cooler night, you want to make sure that you put back down the, um, the sides on that. So, you know, winter's come and gone or the end of winter is here. At least for me anyways, it's usually the end of winter. You'll start seeing leaves start to emerge. At that point, you'll want to prepare them for the beginning of the season. And what that means is that, one, you want to make sure that you got good water supply to them. So for me, that means changing out my drip. Then you're going to want to make sure you give them a, a good fertilizer. My, my fertilizer routine is probably going to be different than yours. Like I mentioned, I'm alkaline, so I treat for the, uh, the soil being alkaline. It tends to bind up the nutrients, and you don't want those nutrients bound up. So I treat for that. Um, also, because they are prone to blossom end rot, I also make sure that they are treated for that as well or fed for that as well. And then I apply a nice well-balanced fertilizer on them, usually being a Smoma Garden Tones, what I've been using lately for the last couple of years. So I like that one because I, I tend to overlove my plants. <laughs> so, and I've killed plants in the past because I give it too much fertilizer. And I haven't really been all the, I haven't had any issues with the Garden Tones. So, so once you do all that and everything's fed, you're gonna wanna put a nice uh, layer of mulch. I personally use straw myself. That's what my go-to is, is straw. Now, people will say only use uh, the weed free. And I, number one, I got a lot of garden area and I cannot afford going weed free for everything. Two, when I finally, I had put in um, a raspberry patch and I decided to go ahead and try out the weed free because I got tired of, it's not so much weeds, but the straw itself comes popping up through the weeds. And the same thing happened with the, mon the ones I paid 20 something dollars for, for a small little bale of weed free straw. And I still got stuff that I have to plot there. So it was completely pointless to me. And from now on, I'll pay my $12.50 at the hay supply place and um, go with that. So I personally use straw. So that's really it. Um, you want to make sure that they stay covered until your nights are well above. If it's um, spicy peppers, 50 degrees. Um, bell peppers, 55 degrees. Once you're out of that danger zone, you can go ahead and uh, keep your plant completely uncovered. Now, if you guys have any questions about anything that I discussed today, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And um, yeah, I think that's it. If you guys enjoyed this content, if you could give me a like or subscribe down below. And as always, stay happy, healthy, and informed. And until next time, bye.